Hi, I'm James McGuire, and our topic today is managed big data services and Google's data analytics tools. To talk about that, I'm joined by Fausto Ibarra, product, uh, Director of Product Management at Google Cloud. Hi, Fausto. How are you doing today? Hello, James. Uh, great talking to you. Good. And, and you are there in uh, the Sunnyvale campus, correct? We're in Sunnyvale, yeah, at Google Cloud's uh, headquarters. Fantastic. So thinking about you know big data managed services, obviously it's a it's a growth sector because a lot of companies don't want to deal with building their own big data infrastructure. There's a lot of complexity involved. There's expense involved. There's you know headaches doing things like spinning up Hadoop clusters. So clearly, you know, big data as a managed service is growing. I'm wondering what you, what you think is basically happening with the sector these days, and what impact it's having on on the analytics community. You know, to what extent is big data managed services changing the relationship between companies and, and their data. What's going on there? Yeah, so the sector is going through an incredible transformation, something that we haven't seen uh, any time in our history. Uh, mm -hmm. the companies are moving from having to think about the infrastructure uh, to just completely focusing on their application. So it used to be the case that companies would have to buy a lot of expensive hardware if they wanted to have a data warehouse, or buy many servers mm -hmm. if they wanted to deploy a Hadoop cluster. Now they can come to the cloud for example, with Google Cloud Platform, they can use services like BigQuery, which allows you to have a data warehouse without having to worry about the infrastructure at all. All you have to do is load your data and start querying it. So that basically frees up a lot of resources so that companies can focus just on their data, just on their applications, and just on empowering their business users to ask questions of their data. Do you think it's a it's a pretty universal move among companies to go ahead and say, "Hey, I want to I want to do a big data managed service offering," or there's still plenty of companies that go, "Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna build this ourselves in house and then do it ourselves in house." Yeah, it's definitely a uh, majority of companies today. Uh, I think companies are definitely thinking twice before making any kinds of uh, investments. Uh, we have uh, customers, for example, like uh, Spotify. So Spotify operates the world's leading uh, music service. They actually started building their own data centers. Oh, okay. And a lot of servers, but quickly they realized that where the value was uh, was basically in their data, understanding their customers, what music do they like, creating new playlists for them, new products, and so on. So basically, they've embarked on a uh, project to move all all of that to Google Cloud Platform. And uh, the way they think about it is, uh, they have limited engineering resources, and they'd rather have those engineering resources working on applications, working on machine learning, working on analytics rather than managing Hadoop clusters or their data warehouses. So like Spotify, we see many customers in financial services, healthcare, media and entertainment, manufacturing, public sector, and so on, who are uh, moving to the cloud uh, directly without having to uh, worry about the infrastructure anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm wondering if you could talk about some of Google's data analytics tools themselves. I know there's a, there's a few that come to the tip of the tongue. There's a you know, cl uh, cloud data proc. It's a Spark and Hadoop service. BigQuery, you mentioned that that's pretty well known. Enterprise Data Warehouse enables people to to analyze large, you know, vast storehouses of data. Uh, data Flow is a tool for developers. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, what, what what am I leaving out there? And I guess how, how are companies using some of these tools in, in the real world? Yeah, so in many interesting ways. So so for example, with uh, Cloud Data Proc, uh, it allows companies to deploy new Hadoop or Spark clusters uh, literally in a minute. So if someone mm -hmm. wants to uh, analyze their data. Uh, you know, in 60 seconds, they can deploy a cluster, whether it is, you know, 10 nodes, 100 nodes, or even 1,000 nodes, and they can start analyzing their data uh, right away. So we see companies who are migrating from existing Hadoop clusters that they had on-premises to uh, the cloud. We also see customers who are deploying new applications using Hadoop uh, and using Cloud Data Pro. So it is uh, one of a very popular service. BigQuery, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, a cloud data warehouse uh, used by a lot of our customers from uh, small startups all the way to very large enterprises. Uh, we have companies who are migrating, you know, existing data warehouses uh, using legacy technologies. Uh, they're moving them to the cloud. We also see companies who are using um, BigQuery to do analytics on their marketing data, their advertising data, uh, financial uh, mm -hmm. services, doing reconciliation, and so on. And to tie many of these products together, that's where uh, Cloud Dataflow comes in. Cloud Dataflow allows you to uh, do both a batch and stream processing pipelines. So if you want to get data very easily from multiple sources into multiple destinations, all you have to do is define what your data pipeline looks like, and we'll take care of all the infrastructure. We'll scale it. We'll make sure that it performs really well. We'll make sure that it's secure. 
So you can worry just about your application and nothing else. And, and Dataflow is, is really it's a, a developer's tool, correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, whereas BigQuery, you might not need to have developer skills to, to be really interfacing with it. Tr true or false there? Yeah, so Dataflow is actually both for developers and for uh, IT ops uh, people. So we actually see a lot of uh, IT ops uh, people who are using it to implement data pipelines, for example, getting data from your on premise data sources to, to a data warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, BigQuery uh, is used by similarly by IT, by developers, and also by business analysts. Right. Uh, we, for example, BigQuery can easily integrate with all of the popular data visualization tools like Tableau or uh, ClickView or MicroStrategy. So uh, developers can basically get access to their insights, writing the tools that they know, and therefore being able to make smarter decisions and uh, being able to uh, get access to all of their, their analytics. Now, a new class of users uh, that we're also finding are, are using the cloud is data scientists. Hmm. Interesting. Data scientists are using all of these tools. Uh, because companies today are looking to make their applications uh, smarter. They're looking to build intelligence and machine learning into their apps directly. And we offer a full set uh, of uh, machine learning APIs and, and a service we call Cloud Machine Learning Engine to deploy custom machine learning models, uh, which integrates really nicely with all these other products. It's to do things like product recommendation or fraud detection or um, you know, image recognition, speech recognition, a lot of really exciting uh, new applications that are possible now with the cloud. Well, and that's uh, somewhere in there is, is TensorFlow, correct? The machine learning uh, library? Absolutely. So Google has been doing machine learning for many, many years. We used it in Google Search, Google Maps, YouTube, et cetera. So about a year and a half ago, we open sourced TensorFlow. Uh, it has become the most popular machine learning framework uh, mm -hmm. in the community. Right. And uh, we offer uh, the ability to run TensorFlow uh, in a Google Cloud Platform. And same principle as with the other products. You don't have to worry about any infrastructure. You don't have to worry about provisioning clusters. Uh, you get access to our specialized hardware. Uh, we announced what we call the Tensor Processing Units, or TPUs, that mm -hmm. are basically uh, designed for uh, machine learning, uh, for training and, and, and uh, prediction. So you can deploy any kind of machine learning model no matter how large it is, without having to worry about the infrastructure, we automate everything so that mm -hmm. companies can focus on their applications. Right. You know, it's interesting you mentioned uh, you know, data scientists as, as a new class of users that are coming on board. Is, is there anything that you're finding that the data scientists are looking for or wanting that some of the earlier users weren't, weren't as, as savvy to? Or what, what effect is this new, this new community of growing community of data scientists having? Yeah, I think one of the most important things is that data scientists are looking for speed of iteration. Like they want to be able mm -hmm. to very quickly go from, I have a lot of data, to I have insights uh, from that data, to I have right. models or applications that can do that. So uh, that plays really nicely with Google Cloud Platform, because we offer you know, very strong performance. Uh, again, no, you don't have to worry about any kind of infrastructure. So it used to be the case that a data scientist would create a machine learning model, and maybe they would have to wait 24 hours for that model to be trained to be able right. to do work. Now they can do that in minutes. So just right. imagine, you can iterate multiple times, even in a single day. And that has given uh, rise to a, an exponential increase in number of uh, data scientists. In fact, uh, as you may know, we acquired Kaggle, uh, right. know, a company that, yes. that has you know, the biggest uh, community of data scientists in the world. Uh, Kaggle. Yeah, the acquisition of Kaggle, Kaggle was in the spring, if I, if I remember correctly. In the spring. And we just announced mm -hmm. that we crossed 1 million uh, developers uh, or, or, and yeah. data scientists, basically, a part of that community. And uh, they're basically all taking advantage of new technologies uh, to be able to uh, yeah, get insights that were impossible before and to acquire new skills as well that help their companies you know, deploy more sophisticated applications. That's a fantastic uh, you know, community of, of, of knowledge, knowledge folks. That's fantastic. Um, interesting. Think about the future. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the need for big data and big data managed services is, is exploding. There's you know, data from mobile. There's data coming in you know, from Internet of Things is, is, is really growing rapidly. You think about billions or trillions of devices each giving information. I mean, wh where, do, where do you see big data and big data in the cloud going in the next several years if you can put yourself in the mind of a hypothetical business owner who needs to you know, track where this is going, say, one, three, five years out? I mean, what kind of advice would you give to that person in terms of, keeping up with big data in the years ahead? 
Yeah, definitely one of the key uh, trends is machine learning and, and artificial intelligence. Um, right. What we'll be seeing is that uh, you know ML and AI will be part of any every application. Right. So you have to think about it as a separate category. So if you are building a data warehouse, the data warehouse will have AI built into it. Yes. You will run predictions on your data right there. Uh, another big uh, trend that we're going to see is the trend towards real time uh, processing mm. data. Yeah. IoT, where a company, for example, our manufacturing customers may have you know, uh, millions of devices connected, and they want to do analytics based on that. So uh, they want to do that in real time. Like one of our customers uh, is uh, Coca-Cola, European partners. Right. Uh, they provide an application using beacons that basically allows them to do promotions to their customers as they get close to a retail location. <laughs> OK. Florida has a fridge with Coca-Cola products, and then you can automatically get a promotion. But in a, so that's a mobile lab plus IoT. And then Coca-Cola uses our, our uh, big data uh, cloud services like BigQuery to be able to do analytics based on that. So can you imagine you can actually understand your right. customers, where they are, what they bought, and then you can uh, target your promotions to them. So we're going to see more and more applications like that, which bring together IoT with uh, big data and with machine learning to derive insights that were uh, impossible before. Fascinating. It, it seems like it's going to be a real competitive edge companies will absolutely need to be leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning to stay competitive in the years ahead. Clearly, it's, it's, it's not optional. Absolutely. It's definitely going to become one of the biggest sources of competitive advantage. And another very important thing is that every uh, business analyst, every developer will get access to these tools. Uh, for example, I was talking to one of our enterprise uh, retail customers recently. And one of the things that they said is that they want every one of the business analysts to be using machine learning and getting analytics without even having to learn anything new. So we're going to see more right. and more tools that essentially build, build that intelligence into the tools so that uh, everyone can benefit from them, whether it is to do product recommendation, to analyze you know, in a call center situation what the conversation was all about, to be able to proactively do maintenance, uh, mm -hmm. and so on. Many, many applications are possible. Do, do you think that I mean, it seems like one of the issues is is nature of the user interface? I mean, you may, obviously a data scientist would be able to understand a far more complex user interface than, say, a sales rep in the field. Perhaps is is there a move towards creating a simpler user interface, or is it more about a deeper fe feature set? Yeah, I think uh, there's a move definitely towards having uh, different types of simple user interfaces, but they have to be uh, adapted to the specific uh, customer needs. So, if you're a data scientist. Uh, you may be interested in using something like Kaggle. You know, at Kaggle, we offer a, a, a way to like download data sets, to right. very quickly start interacting with your data, to publish and share your results with your colleagues, and be able to do all of that within a secure environment. Mm -hmm. If you're a business analyst, you may be interested in something more like a data visualization tool. In both cases, the tools are simple, but they cater to the needs of specific uh, users. For developers, uh, you know, developers like interacting with products uh, using uh, their popular languages. So it's right. to support all the popular languages that they may be interested in so that they can build the, that, those big data capabilities and, and uh, machine learning into their applications. So there's definitely a move towards simplification of user interfaces, but they have to be catered to the user's needs. Right. Fausto, I think you've said it. That's absolutely fan it's really fascinating, it's really interesting stuff. And I'm sure that you know, obviously the market's going to grow hugely in the years ahead. Uh, I, I appreciate you sharing your expertise with us this afternoon. I, I will send you the link when it's all done, and, um, and thank you very much. Well, thank you for the opportunity, James. Always a pleasure.